the one who has created everything, the one on whom everything depends, the one who needs no one, the one who does not need any partners, any support, partner, there are no partners in his sabbat, there are no partners in his command and control and authority, the one to whom every single one of us has to return. He sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of all the creations, the Imam of all the Anbiya alayhi wa sallam, the last and final in the chain of prophets, and above all, the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, and completed the blessing of guidance on Rasulullah sallallahu My dear respected brothers and elders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored Anbiya alayhi salam by making Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa a messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored humans among all the other creations by making Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one of the humans. My dear respected brothers and elders, this means everyone is indebted to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We see some kids that they feel and they take pride in what their parents have achieved. And those who do not have the same thing, then they feel lower than the others sometimes. In that pride that they are taking, in the honor that they are enjoying, their parents earned it for them. So they need to be respectful and they need to be obedient to their parents. This is not only in the, in the respect and honor, but everything else also. Thus, every single one of us is indebted to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that because of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we enjoy the honors. My dear respected brothers and elders, if, if there is a supervisor or manager or however high you want to blow the example, a king, the respect and honor and authority they have is due to the submittance of people of the subordinates to them. They may still have the control and command and authority, but the respect and honor that lives as a relationship between them, between the two, is that somebody submits to them. My dear respected brothers and el elders, for example, a sports team, somebody who takes pride, a player being part of that sport team cannot say that I will play by my own rules. A sports team player cannot say that I, once I get into the ground, I will have my own rules. The moment he does that, he would be shown a red card and thrown out of the field. He would be shown a red card and thrown out of the field. If he goes against the game policy, the coach will pull him back. Will not even want to leave him for a single second there. Would not even say that, okay, move to this, fall back to this position and let's, let's have someone else lead the, the whole scheme. Will pull him out of the game and disrespect him and never allow him back on the field. My dear respected brothers and elders, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with this honor of selecting us into the team of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a huge honor. This is a huge honor. And we take pride in this. Pride in the sense that we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, made us Muslims in the team of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we do not practice the, we, we do not have the life where we are practicing the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thus we don't feel that how big of honor it is. People who did, Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala ajma'in, they let go of all their standards and their respects and honors and systems and everything. 
They broke everything and accepted Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his methods. When they did that, the non-believers, they saw the huge respect that Sahaba had earned. So, so big of a difference that these non-believers, they started call themselves Muslims. Thus came the Munafiqs, the hypocrites. Because they wanted to enjoy the honor of Islam in this dunya that Sahaba showed to them. By example, by following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these people called themselves Muslims, but inside they hide their own kufr. So in this world, they wanted to enjoy the respect and high honors of being in the team of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and elders, whatever hardship or pleasure we see in this dunya is just a taste of akhirah. It's just a taste of akhirah. Those who follow the standards set by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they get the honors in this dunya as a taste of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them for akhirah. And those who do not, they get the disrespect and dishonor and failures of this dunya, which may seem huge, but only they are a taste of what is waiting for them in Akhirah. It means that the real honor, the real success, the real failure, the real disrespect is waiting for the next phase, is waiting for the next phase. A person who leaves this world as a believer, will be resurrected in the next phase as a believer. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned this in the hadith that you would be resurrected the way you die. The condition you die in, you will be resurrected in the same condition. And on that day, even the followers of other anbiya alayhi salam, they would finally come and submit to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to intercede on the, on the, uh, uh, for, the, for the whole humanity. Such high honors and respect that nothing would be able to hide it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose it. My dear respected brothers and elders, my honor and every single one of us honor and success, both in this dunya and akhirah, is following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And it is nothing hard. It is nothing hard. Especially those, alhamdulillah, born as Muslims, we did not have to go through the challenges of finding the reality and breaking away from the systems that, we, that they were brought up in and accepting the reality. My dear respected brothers and elders, the challenges are that how firm is my belief, my love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The moment I start believing, I start putting my yaqeen in other things, it becomes harder to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The moment I start loving other things, it is starts getting harder to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and elders, part of the responsibility goes to the parents, the critical part of it. Every time when they are thinking about making any purchases for their children and inspiring them with some brands and celebrities, they probably do not understand, they do not realize what they are doing is that they are putting a yaqeen of success and following them in the hearts of their children really deep without thinking about it. And as those kids grow up, then they become the hard followers of those celebrities in a sports, in fashion, in any field of life, in any walk of life, sometimes in careers that I want to be like this. As a Muslim, my inspiration should be that I want to be like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I want to be like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, they showed it. But how did they get it? They followed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while negating their own systems, while negating their own standards. Some Sahaba radiallahu they, they mentioned it. 
that what was our condition, what were our standards of pride, what would we feel proud before becoming a Muslim, and how big of a turn we took. Do you think it was easy for them? It was as difficult as for any one of us, or it was as easy and possible as any one of us to do today. My dear respected brothers and elders, what is critical is that they followed, they observed and followed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This, all this, these classifications of this as follows, don't miss anything about it, it's a sin to miss, this is wajib, this is sunnah, this is all this. This, a lot of these classifications came about 100 years later from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is doing something, everybody is doing that. Whatever their heart is saying, whatever their mind is saying, does not matter. Whatever their standards may say, does not matter. Whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is doing, everybody wants to do it. And it was not only the elders, it was also the kids that they enjoyed and they loved the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they did not want to leave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even in the times of hardship like that. My dear respected brothers and elders, a question may arise that today if somebody, if today somebody wants to bring a positive change in his life, positive turn in his life, meaning getting closer to how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more. The same standard, the same methods, the same process applies today. Sahaba radiallahu alayhi wa when they wanted to learn salah, they would come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, spend some time with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would teach, they would observe Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he is praying. This is how they would learn. By being in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are multiple accounts that people used to come to the to Sahaba radiallahu alayhi wa and spend time with them, travel with them, stay with them, and learn the deen from them. My dear respected brothers and elders, the same chain continues today. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has a chain of burasa of ears. These are not the people who, who received any wealth, worldly wealth from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the ulama who inherited the knowledge of deen, the spirit of iman, and they would exist until the condition for becoming a mu'min exists, which is until the last human to come, that he has to die but only as a Muslim only as a believer and every believer has to work towards the completion of his iman my dear respected brothers and elders this means allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep this chain alive it won't come by reading the books only it won't come by listening to the lectures only it would necessarily need somebody whoever wants a positive change in his life change in his life to go join the company of friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ears of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and there is no other way. There is no other way. All the other th ways that look so beautiful leads, there are so many fitnas waiting to actually take the people who follow those paths with a lot of ikhlas, but there is nobody to help them tread that path. There is no guide for them. And with the ikhlas, with all the power of ikhlas, they just go towards the fitnas faster. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless myself and all of us, the company of pious people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make one of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make those who benefit from the company of the years of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.